Yeah, my wife, uh, she, she makes sure I don't look too bad. <laughs> hey, man, congratulations, first of all. I know there's probably a, a bunch of reasons for this, but why has Cleveland been such a good fit for you? Yeah, I mean, it's where I, you know, obviously when I got traded from um, – from Buffalo, you know, that's where I got my start. And, you know, you, when you get, you know, drafted somewhere, you, you want to spend your year, you, 10 years there, you want to spend your career there, but it's not how it always works out for, you know, for almost everyone, it doesn't work out like that. Um, so I got traded the year after it. And, you know, I looked at that as like a disappointment, like, dang it, man, like I wasn't good enough for, for Buffalo and all this other stuff. But, you know, through, through that adversity, I realized that it was way more of, I'm wanted by a team. I'm given an opportunity and that was Cleveland. You know, they gave me my opportunity um, to start uh, to really play. Uh, they had no question that I was going to be the starter. Um, that's exactly what, uh, you know, coach kitchen said when I came in, you know, I had a conversation with him. He said, man, I got you to be the starter. Um, and then I, you know, I got a full off season with coach Callahan, uh, you know, a year ago and, you know, took a, took a big stride in technique and fundamentals. Um, and then this year, you know, getting a little bit more consistent, you know, not having splash plays or bad plays. And, you know, it, it truly is amazing. I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, the fans of Cleveland, I mean, offensive linemen are loved. They're, they're glorified here and that, that that's just a special city. Hey, we've been watching you crush guys for the last couple of years here. What is that block on Sunday rank where you left your feet to clear the room for, for Nick? Man, I, I think I got more lucky on that block. I, I, <laughs> I almost tackled him, but no, it was, uh, it was it, coach, uh, coach Peters, uh, quickly messaged me a, a MMA takedown. He was like, look, it's not holding. It's, it's, you're using force against force. It's not, and you know, he, uh, he made me feel better about it, but, uh, you know, I'm lucky I, uh, didn't get the rag, but, uh, no, it was, um, it was, uh, definitely a good block. You know, I'm lucky to have, you know, great running backs in the backfield. Um, you know, we were a two headed beast. We found out we were a three headed beast with D now, you know, we're, we're, we're blessed, uh, to be blocking for those guys. You give them an inch, they take a mile kind of mindset. They're not afraid of, uh, you know, running inside and, uh, you know, they're not afraid of the boom. So I'm thankful for that. Um, you know, Nick, uh, he, he saw that hole and he took it. You know, I just, I was, I just made it a little bit bigger. Thanks bud. Yes, sir. Let's go to Nate next. Nate, you're good to unmute. Congratulations. Uh, one of the times we talked recently uh, as a group with you in August, um, you know, you were talking about the business side of things and how Andrew Barry, you know, it's a good problem to have a lot of uh, young, talented guys, but not everybody can get paid was, was the vibe. Are, how thankful are you that this investment was made? And did it surprise you at all, given kind of what you were looking at coming into the season and, you know, all the contract eligible guys on the team. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, I think that, you know, I wanted to be as candid as possible. Like there is a business in the personal side um, and you can't get too caught up on either one. You kind of have to weigh and give and take. I mean, that's with any, you know, opportunity cost. Um, that's kind of how it works out. So, you know, when it came to the personal side, I, I couldn't love my team more. I couldn't love my coaches. I couldn't love, you know, the city more. Um, but that's that's not always how it works out. Sometimes that you have to make hard decisions and that's, you know, letting a certain player to keep another player. And, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, they viewed me as a special player, um, a very special player, second, uh, you know, second largest uh, guard contract in NFL history, which is, a, you know, amazing thing. Um, but better than I'm, I'm, I'm staying in a great city with, you know, great, great fans and great, great team, um, great players around me. Um, you know, it's, it's just a blessing, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was fast and it was, it was slow until it was fast. You know, um, you know, we had an offer here, you know, Hey, we'll be patient. We understand that you, you're working with a lot of stuff. You're working with a lot of teams, you know, or not teams. You're working with a lot of players and stuff like that to make sure that it, you're getting team, uh, team friendly stuff. And, you know, we'll give you your time and your space. And, you know, so it was slow until it was fast. And then all of a sudden it was, it was happening at, uh, you know, light speed, you know, it kind of had to be like, Oh, you know, okay. Uh, focus in, focus in, lock in, you know, it's nine at nine at night, making sure you get everything right. But no, it was definitely a blessing. Well, I know how much you say you love it here, but, you know, going back to that business side, you know, some guys could wait to hit free agency and try to get, you know, as much money as possible, you know, on the open market, compare offers, whatever. Um, why did you want to get it wrapped up, man? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, you know, I feel like there, there is, um, you know, as a player, there is security to it. 
Um, you know, it, it's more time that, you know, you, you're insured from a team aspect where, you know, if you're playing on your own time for a deal, sometimes you can get injured and bad things can happen. You, you pray that that never happens to anybody, but um, it does. Uh, so there is a little bit of stress to that, but, you know, my mindset going into the season was I'm going to focus on ball. And I'm going to let my agent focus on the contract stuff. Um, you know, that, and that's the personal, the business, the personal side is I, I owe it to these guys in the room. I owe it to the, you know, to the team to, you know, to play as hard as I can to play as, as well as I can to get better each week. Um, and let my agent who, you know, is paid handsomely, uh, you know, 3% of that, that contract you see, uh, you know, to, to do it. So that's why I, you know, I trust him with that. Right, let's go to Cameron Justice next. Hey, Wyatt, congratulations. Uh, you know, we were just talking about you making these big blocks, right? And we've seen you make pan pancake blocks all year and really help pave the way for the running game to exist. But now that you have you we blocked you up, the Browns blocked you up for the next couple of years, where do you see that continuing to develop? And, you know, do you put that on continuity? Do you see this? increasing now that you're here for the next few years? Yeah, no, I mean, that it, it's amazing, um, you know, to be around the same guys for a year or two is special, uh, you know, when you can, when you can lock down some guys for four or five years uh, together, that that's special. That's, you know, um, it takes each year you're gaining, you know, so much continuity, so much experience together um, that, you know, each year is just, it's, it gets better and better and better. And, um, you know, I'm lucky to have, you know, a great center and JC and a great tackle and, and Jack. And um, right now, Blake, who's playing, you know, out of his mind, I, I thought he was going to get some money with how well he's been playing. I mean, he's been blocking up everybody. Um, but uh, but no, he's um, uh, again, great teammates. Uh, you know, Baker was was lights out. Um, you know, Nick was lights out. You know, uh, I've been blessed to, you know, Kareem comes, uh, should be coming back here. I mean, soon I know he's fighting hard to get back. Um, so, you know, we have, we have a great teammates, um, great players. And I know that continuity is amazing. Um, it's, it's, you know, again, it's, a, it's a special thing. It's life-changing money. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's all these amazing things, but the, the work has just begun. Are we going to Dan Lobby next? Hey, Wyatt, congratulations. Um, I, you told us about how you were like in the tub when you got the news that you were getting traded to Cleveland and, and you had to come here before it was like the last preseason game. I'm just curious, what, what moment when you were here, did you kind of realize this was the place you wanted to be for a long time? Yeah. I mean, I, um, I, yeah, when I got that call or I, he kind of came into the, he knew where I was. He gave me a call and I said, I said, I'll have to, and then he came down and we went up to talk to coach and, I just remember being in like so, so much, not disbelief, but you kind of know what's going on, but you don't exactly know. You're like, Hey, maybe this is a different conversation that coach is going to have with me before a game. But uh, it ended up being the uh, exactly what I thought it was. And, you know, you get traded and, you know, I, I didn't know what was coming next. Um, you know, it was, it was definitely a, a weird, weird moment. Um, but my, my parents were in town. My, my girlfriend, who's now my wife was in town. So it was, it was like, uh, hey, guys, I know this is weird for you, but this is also really weird for me. But um, luckily, we got everything sorted out. Um, you know, that, that I wouldn't say there was a single moment. I, I, you know, Cleveland has obviously grown on me. I love, you know, as, as cliche as it sounds, I truly do um, view the weather, the elements that we have to play in as a strength, you know, the, the blue collar mentality. We have a fan base that, you know, it's, it's, it's paycheck to paycheck yet they have season tickets. You know what I mean? Like that's how important it is to our fan base uh, to be there to support us. Um, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't uh, make them too happy, but, you know, hopefully we can, you know, make them happy and, uh, you know, keep them pleased and, you know, keep this city, uh, you know, hungry. And once we, uh, you know, get some success, you know, it's it, again, uh, you know, I've been a fan of Cleveland for, you know, two, three years and there's people who have 30, 40, 50 years, uh, loving this team. So, you know, it means, it means the world to us, but I know it means the world to the fans. And then I wanted to ask about Bo Callahan, cause I know he's meant a lot to you. And, and um, I think he wanted you in the draft back when you were coming out. Do you think you're, you're sitting here today talking about this extension if you don't get to play under Bill Callahan? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as, as, you know, a godly guy, I would, I'd like to say that it was all in God's plan to put me around the people that I need to be to, uh, to, um, you know, make those decisions of, hey, do I, do I make this decision of 
working hard, trusting what this guy is teaching or do I not, um, you know, being like, poor me, you know, I got traded or, you know, being like, all right, it's time to, it's time to, you know, make this place home and, you know, never have that happen again, never give them an opportunity to send me home again. Um, you know, that kind of hunger, um, you know, that, that I think that that happened, uh, you know, again, it was crazy. I, you know, I come to, I have conversations with Bill, Hey, you know, my agents tell me how much Bill would be, you know, attribute to me and out of the grace of God, he comes to Cleveland. I say out of the grace of God, he's also, you know, one of the craziest mans I've ever met, men I've ever met in my entire life. And, you know, he is, he gets us working out there, you know, but I'm extremely thankful for his guidance and coaching. Um, but yeah, no, it is, uh, you know, again, there's so much to work on that, you know, I know that this is an amazing thing, but I, I have to get better and I have to continue to get better. And I know that, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's happy with that answer, but you know, it's, it's real. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to go with Jack Jackson next. Zach, you can unmute your line for me, please. Okay, we're going to go with Mary Kay next. Now, Mary Kay, can you unmute for me, please? Mm -hmm. Hey, Wyatt, congratulations. Um, so first of all, you know, it, the, the season began with this very powerful image of you with the alligator <laughs> on your shoulders. Uh, so my first question is, is it only fitting, uh, you know, that you go from, you know, the alligator image to this blockbuster contract that makes you the second highest paid guard in history of the NFL? I mean, I, I would say shortly after that, uh, that alligator was when I got married. Uh, and, you know, I was actually talking to AB. I was like, what, you know, he asked me, which one is going to be, uh, you know, bigger, bigger for uh, your life. And I was like, you know, obviously, you know, one is generational wealth. Don't get me wrong. That's amazing. But, you know, the other ones, you know, something that, you know, you plan for 50 years and, you know, brings you children and brings you the most joy in your life. So while money is an amazing thing, you know, I, I definitely have to say the, uh, the marriage was bigger than the, the alligator and all that different stuff, but it was, it was kind of funny, you know, having that picture and, you know, even this block, you know, my wife, she has the social media. I don't, I stay off of that stuff, but uh, she showed me a picture of uh, the, you know, the block on Nick Chubb's run with the gator. He was actually dressed as the gator and it was me hitting him, but uh, it was, it was funny. So uh, my follow-up question then real quick, is that sort of uh, go going to be the image maybe that, you know, that defines you? Because again, you've gone from, you know, gator guy to, uh, you know, <laughs> to pancake blocking and you know even Teron Matthews thing after the playoff game was funny yeah. uh, so is it, are you are you like you know gator guy and, and is, does this image sort of in some ways define uh what the Browns have just wrapped up for the next four years yeah no all my uh my wife's friends make the joke um if you don't open up a pancake house uh after football you're you're crazy but uh but all jokes aside no it's um it's definitely a blessing you know it, it is definitely crazy um, it's been an amazing year. Um, I thank God for that. And, uh, you know, the, I, but I, I, I continue to say it, you know, the work, the work has just begun, you know, I have to continue to, to play at a high level to, you know, earn what, you know, what this is. Thank you. Are right, we going to make these our next final two and I'm going to go back with Zach Jackson. Can you unmute for me, Zach? Hi, Wyatt. Um, when you had that conversation with your college coaches about changing positions, was, was the NFL any part of that, let alone, hey, someday you might make $40 million off this move? No, I'd say that it was even uh, more short, short, you know, thought out than that. You know, I, I make the joke that, you know, um, I, I thought that I was going to move back to defensive line. You know, I was like, oh, Bud Foster loved me. You know, he did cartwheels to, to get me here. You know, he definitely moved me back to, to offensive, uh, to defensive line. And, you know, that it ended up not happening, but it was for the best. And um, again, you know, that was another adversity piece that, you know, goes down in the history of, you know, another, another piece of, uh, you know, something I had to keep, but uh, you know, it was, it was a blessing, you know, it was uh, truly, there was injuries on the offensive line, you know, my freshman year. And I was like, Hey, you know, I'm willing to, uh, moved offensive line and, you know, it, you know, thinking I'd go back, and it didn't end up like that. And, you know, the rest is history, but. All right, we're going to make this our last one from Nate. Nate, you can unmute. Hey, well, it's just um, kind of the news of the day from a team perspective outside of your contract extension, more adversity um, with 
Nick Chubb and Dimitri Felton going to be placed on the COVID list. I know you guys just, you know, had a big moment, um, you know, galvanizing after a crazy week with the win over the Bengals. So how are you viewing this latest development and uh, what's going to take to keep overcoming things like this? Yeah, it's like for every good news, there's something bad that happens. What is this, the world? <laughs> but um, but no, it is. It, is, it sucks. Um, you know, I, I hope the best for them. I, I hope that, you know, I, I think they were vaxxed. I, you know, I, I can't speak for anybody else. Um, but, you know, I, I really hope that, uh, you know, they're back quickly. Um, no symptoms. You know, let's just hope that it was, uh, you know, very minor. Um, you never, you couldn't, I wouldn't wish that on my enemy. But, um, you know, it is, it is, uh, it does suck. Um, but that's, you know, something for them to handle and them to work on. And is this, I, I know it's like every time uh, something like this pops up, you know, you guys have kind of say that, you know, you, you've been there, done that, and seen a lot of this type of adversity in the last year and a half. Do you think this team is pretty well equipped to, to deal with it, whatever's thrown at it? Yeah, I remember one game we had like uh, 15 dudes in, in a hot tub that you're only supposed to have about five. And, uh, you know, we got in, we got in trouble and they all had to sit out a game and we had no wide receivers. So um, I, I feel like if you follow the rules, you do the right things, you know, it gives you the best opportunity to get back. And, you know, it's not how it always works. You know, there's, you know, times where, you know, this happens or that happens, but it's happening to everybody. And, you know, to say poor me or poor this or poor that is just, you know, it's not the best uh, mindset. It's, hey, how are we going to handle this situation um, and handle it in stride? And, you know, I think that that's how Coach Stefanski is. Um, and I'm thankful for that.